What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown and today we're taking another look at our Chinese made 4G GPS tracker. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cellular modem and its capabilities. So without further ado, let's go look over here on the screen and I have that, that data sheet pulled up again for the cell modem and one of the things that I noticed that was very interesting when I, when I looked at this is that there is a, um, yeah, there's a UR interface. There is also a USB interface on this device. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting because in the product documentation for this device provi provided by the kind of front company, Moto Watchdog, uh, they only mention it as a charging port, port right? They, they say, hey, you plug into USB-C to charge the battery on the device, right? But the cell modem does have USB capabilities, and it is for debugging and software upgrades. So that is something more than just providing power to the device. So it is possible that the USB data lines to that USB interface are connected to the modem. Let's see what happens uh, when we do that. So what we're gonna do over here on my machine is we're going to run dmessage and we're just going to get ready to connect this device. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my USB-C cord that's connected to my computer and I'm going to, you know, connect the battery to the circuit and then I have to press this button on the back to actually power it on. And we see that uh, initially there's this, this USB boot port and then it changes. And, and I believe that USB boot port is like a firmware upgrade opportunity right when the, when the device powers up. Um, and then if that is not used, if that opportunity is not taken, then it transitions into what we see below, that there are these three uh, TTY USB interfaces, which, uh, if you watch this channel, that is what all my other UART cables show up as. So, to connect to this cell modem and interact with it, it is this easy. I've plugged in my USB cable to, to this and it's showing up as a GSM modem. And then I can use PicoCom like we do for all of our UART things. We're gonna pick our default baud rate that we should always be guessing first. And then I'm gonna say dev TTY. Uh, so I'm gonna skip this part, but uh, you, can, you, can, you just guess through them. And then I found that this one is the one that actually allows us to uh, write and read at commands. Now, what are at commands? At commands are uh, a custom type of uh, command and response that modems tend to use. Um, it's, it's for configuring modems, sending data, things like that. And so I'm going to type AT and hit enter. And you notice you didn't see me, you didn't see the, the, the at words pop up on the screen. You just saw it respond with okay. Um, that is because, and this is gonna depend on the cell modem, by default, echo is not enabled. So I'm gonna issue a different at command. It's A-T-E, and then I'm gonna hit enter, and it says okay. Now I have enabled echo. And so now I can see I can see my, my, my at commands. And so, so there we go. I have this, I have this, uh, this, uh, this serial interface now open that I can communicate with the cellular modem on this GPS tracker device. So uh, what kind of at commands can we send? So this is where that documentation that we grabbed from our information gathering phase is going to be super helpful. So uh, like I mentioned in that video, these at commands are, there's a subset of them that are gonna work on any cell modem, but it is really helpful to have the documentation that is specific to your cellular modem that you are interacting with because that is going to allow you 
to uh, have the specific commands and any quirks and differences between the modems, you're going to understand that. So, um, so this this is going to be a great command to start with. So, display product identify identification information. Um, and you'll notice that uh, as, as we go through and look at these commands, so this command just has an execute type. So each command will have like a core command and then it will, um, and then it will have things where you can say like equals question mark if you want to like identify the command. If you want to do a read, it will just be, it's just question mark, I believe. Um, but there's different modifiers that you can put on the end. You can do a write, uh, you can do a write style at command, and that is all specified in this documentation as well. But right now, we just have a super simple command, ATI, to get back some information about our cell modem. So let's hop over here, and you'll notice that occasionally, as the cell modem is doing things, it's just it's just printing stuff out in the console. But it doesn't matter. I can just I can just enter my commands and uh, interspersed with all of that. So we'll scroll back up. Um, so you can see here, uh, manufacturer is incorporated. Okay, nice. Uh, model, and so there is that model number that we saw from our first video on that cell modem. So that is the model of the cell modem, that SIMCOM cell modem we have. And we also uh, get printed out our IMEI. That is the address, that is the number uh, for a cell device that is tied to the modem itself. So there's the IMEI and the IMSI, ISMI. I'm always going to get those mixed up. So the, the, the MZ and the IMZ, right? And so uh, this one is obviously identifying the hardware. And then I have another command down here to get the number that is tied to my SIM card. So here is my, my SIM card's identification number. Uh, I'm not going to be using this much longer uh, for those of you that have funny ideas about that. Um, so I just have some other commands in a, in a list here. And so I'm just going to go through some of these commands. And so uh, another really interesting one is to get the IP address that is assigned to my modem. Now, if I issue this, you'll see back, I just get 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. That is because in this basement, I get terrible cell signal, and this modem is not actually connecting properly. So to demonstrate some other commands, I'm, we're actually going to view a video that I pre-recorded of me on my driveway uh, on my laptop. So here we go, and I'm just going to kind of narrate this. So uh, yeah, very similar setup, right, connected to that um, that that. Uh, TTY number two, um, running this command to see what uh, network operator I'm connected to. And then you see I do get a private IP address back from that command to get my IP address. Notice it's a local IP. Now I'm going to run a command to get my APN. This is going to be super interesting here. And notice that, notice that identifier. So that is the private cell network that this SIM card is associated with. And now what I am going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pause the video here. So now what I'm getting ready to do is send the, a ping command. There's an at command where I can send an ICMP ping command through the cell network and out to the internet. And what this is going to do is I'm going to ping my, my, my public uh, um, DigitalOcean server. And then I'm going to be able to run a packet capture on my DigitalOcean server, and I will see the egress IP address for uh, the SIM provider's infrastructure for their cell network, for this private uh, APN. And so we're going to do that. And then we get the ping back. So we get the ping back from this three dot something IP address. So that is the public IP that my traffic is coming out of when it leaves this private cell network. And so, um, so again, so we have that IP and then we have the name of that private APN. And that's gonna let us go do a little more digging. So I'm gonna exit out right now of my 
my serial interface that I had, my serial session I had with the cell modem. And I've got that IP address right here. And so we're just gonna run whois on it. And that's gonna print out a bunch of information and we can see uh, very clearly that this is being hosted in AWS. So uh, this server, yeah, is, is, is hosted in, up in AWS is where they're getting it from and they're not allowing any traffic inbound, which is a, a good thing. That's good. Good, secure cell network. So we also have this identifier right here. Uh, this is the APN. Again, so there are, uh, the APN is this value that your, your, your cell phone sends to the tower. So, so this company right here that this identifier is associated with, they do not, they are not network operators, right? They are not putting cell phone towers out there, right? They're not like, you know, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, who are going around putting up cell infrastructure. No, so they use those network operators, they partner with those network operators, and then when your device gives one of these private APNs, it routes your traffic through their private network. Now there's all sorts of interesting things that we could explore uh, in those private networks, um, but I just wanna understand a little bit about this company. So let's just do a bit of searching. So when we, when we just you know, search for this APN, we are led to this company. And it's like, okay, so the world's first IoT, IoT lifetime, lifetime, right? Just like uh, in our first video in this series, we talked about in the Amazon post, it says, oh, you, you, get, you get data for life, right? For life, for 10 years, right? For 10 years for just $10, right? So it's a, it's a pretty good deal. Um, but there's a little bit of false advertising on the, on the GPS uh, devices part on that Amazon page. But we'll, we'll let it slide. Um, but I was talking in that first video. I am super curious how they are getting the lo lo location data through, right? Because that, that PCB was clearly meant to have a microcontroller in the middle there to gather the GPS data from the GPS module and, and, and send it over the, over the cell network. But it's not doing that, right? So how is it? getting the location data to, to the, the mobile app, right? Well, uh, they, they nicely have a, a little like developer documentation portal here. So, so let's, let's go and look at that. And then they have an API Explorer. So this is super awesome. And if we look down here, there is a device lo uh, lo locator section. So, this is super cool. So there's an eight, so so this API, this is this has to be how the back end of the mobile uh, of the mobile application is actually pulling the GPS data. It's through this API because that's the private SIM card that is placed in this device, right? And we all we, and we already said there's no way it's like actually sending like over the 4G pipe to some API, uh, to some like backend. It's not, it's not gonna push the, the GPS location like that. And there's another thing that I noticed in all those Amazon reviews, right? There were a lot of people complaining that the location was like not very accurate. Like it was in the ballpark of the right location, but it wasn't as accurate as you would expect a GPS tracker to be, right? Like if it's using GPS, you're usually gonna get within, you know, a few feet of your location. Well, in this, in this API for get device positions, there is an option, uh, if we can find it, for the source of the location data. And when we look at this dropdown, we see, let's see if I can like make this page bigger for you mobile people. Um, we can see that there are two options for this source field, GPS and cell tower. And cell tower is what I think is being used here. The one GPS antenna on the device is plugged into the, GP, into the GPS module that is not in any way actually connected to the cell modem because there's a big missing piece in the middle that is the microcontroller. But 
if they're but they don't need any of that to do like the cell the the, the cell tower location it's not real gps right um and so therefore that would kind of be another bit of false advertising on behalf of this 4g gps tracker it's not using real gps it's using cell phone tower tracking which yeah it can get your location within you know hundreds of feet but it's not going to get it within a few feet like gps is so um I think we've gotten to the bottom of what is uh, not so great and a little bit sketchy about this product. Um, I'm definitely going to keep the SIM card. I actually think this company is super fascinating. And for IoT projects that you're doing on your own, if you want to give like a little Raspberry Pi internet access, just like a little bit of data, I mean, this is not an app, this is not an ad for this company but it is it is pretty cool you get 500 meg for 10 bucks and that sim will last you for 10 years right um and even you you can even send some some sms messages i tried that a bunch with this cell modem and i don't know why but it's not working um well maybe i'll try uh with better signal somewhere else but uh, this would be great for all sorts of IoT projects. I'm definitely going to take this SIM card and, and, and mess with it in some other ways. But I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this, uh, this channel with other people if you like it. And uh, let me know uh, in the comments what other type of devices you want me to look at. Do you want me to look at more uh, cell devices? I think this GPS tracker was cool, and there's a lot of other dirt cheap uh, GPS trackers out there on Amazon. Should I look at more of those? Um, and feel free to hop in our Discord community and uh, let us know there too. Thanks. Have a good day.